House and Senate Democrats hope to reach a new budget deal to fund popular programs and block fare increases on trains and buses before the legislative session ends Wednesday evening the Democratic plan calls for fully restoring $130 million for the popular Medicare savings program and restoring $94 million in town aid that generates extra votes in both chambers from legislators seeking to help their towns. Both Democrats and Republicans would provide more than $36 million to eliminate bus and train for increases that are scheduled to start on July 1, but Republicans are not as optimistic about reaching a quick compromise, saying they have received only a one-page summary and not a fully detailed budget from the Democrats. By contrast, Republicans have publicly released a 207-page budget in technical legal language that was written by the legislature's nonpartisan lawyers and is ready for a vote. They gave me one sheet total, which doesn't help, said Senate Republican leader Len Fasano of North Haven. I need to have a full budget so I understand what we are talking about. Last year, legislators spent months throughout the spring and summer before heading into the fall, before the budget was signed into law on Halloween. Now, they're trying to complete a deal before the regular session ends at midnight Wednesday. Both plans would avert the 10% fare increase proposed by Governor Daniel P. Malloy on the Metro North commuter railroad, starting on July 1. The agreements also avoid boosting bus fares by 25 cents per ticket, a 14.3% increase. On July 1, Malloy's chief spokeswoman, Kelly Donnelly, said Monday that the Democratic plan is preferable to the Republican proposal, with a simpler and more responsible approach that uses less of the rainy day fund for fiscal emergencies. Fasano rejected Malloy's view and said he tried to work with the governor, this is not shocking news that he thinks their budget is better. Fasano said, He's never given us any credit for anything we've ever done in this building in the, the seven years he's been here. Even when we worked with him on issues, Fasano said that the Republican budget fully funds the hiring of 30 Superior Court judges who were approved last week by the legislature. Some Republicans had said that the state could not afford to pay nearly $300,000 for each judge, including the judge a salary of $167,000 per year, plus the costs of support staff like clerks. Lawmakers still cannot agree on how to use the Rainy Day Fund, which may grow to $1.5 billion, the highest total in state history. Some of that additional revenue consists of one-time taxes due to the expiration of a federal tax break for hedge funds, which prompted wealthy investors in Lower Fairfield County to pour hundreds of millions in extra dollars into state coffers. Legislators will likely tap into the Rainy Day Fund to close the current projected deficit of nearly $382 million in the current fiscal year that ends on June 30. Republicans have previously said they wanted a more full-blown budget, rather than making tweaks of a relatively few items that the Democrats prefer. The main issue now is they would like to just fix a couple of things in the budget and go home, said House Republican leader Themis Clarides of Derby. And we would like to run a full budget that has revenue, appropriations and the normal things. We have a fully vetted budget that does not raise taxes and prioritizes the people who need the most help in the state, Sen. Kathy Austin, a Sprague Democrat, said the Medicare savings program changes will largely affect low-income citizens. She said citizens, in her district approach her and ask about saving the program, I can tell you that they are not rich, Austin said. I can just say that out loud that, the people who live in my district are not the very wealthy. The Democratic plan also calls for an additional $16 million for community colleges, $2 million for vocational agricultural schools and restoring money that would have been, swept, from clean energy funds and diverted into the general fund to balance the budget. Also up for negotiation before the end of the session a few transportation funding proposals from Governor Malloy. In order to provide money for transportation, Malloy is calling for diverting a portion of the state sales tax on the sale of cars and placing that money into the transportation fund, starting on July 1. That transfer would generate an estimated $47 million in the 2019 fiscal year and higher amounts each year as larger percentages of the sales tax would be diverted under a phased-in plan. Eventually, an estimated $182 million would be generated in the 2022 fiscal year when the entire amount of the car sales tax was included. Malloy has also proposed raising the gasoline tax by $0.07 cents a gallon over four years, which would raise an additional $30 million in the 2019 fiscal year and as much as $105 million in the 2022 fiscal year when the full $0.07 cent increase is enacted. In addition, Malloy is calling for imposing a new fee of $3 for each tire purchased, starting July 1 and raising an estimated $8 million per year. Current staff writer Sandra Gomez Aceves contributed to this report.
Caption Ariella Botts, 5, of East Hartford, was born with a severe muscular disorder called nemaline myopathy that requires round-the-clock care from a visiting nurse. Her mother, Rachel, talks about how the service is threatened by a state cutback that would lower the reimbursement from Medicaid. Without the visiting nurses, like Livia Brown, seen caring for Ariella, she would be in a medical foster home or a hospital or long-term care facility, probably at higher cost. Ariella Botts, 5, of East Hartford, was born with a severe muscular disorder called nemaline myopathy that requires round-the-clock care from a visiting nurse. Her mother, Rachel, talks about how the service is threatened by a state cutback that would lower the reimbursement from Medicaid. Without the visiting nurses, like Livia Brown, seen caring for Ariella, she would be in a medical foster home or a hospital or long-term care facility, probably at higher cost. Caption After 24 years in the U.S., Franklin and Joe Conde Ramos must decide between returning to Ecuador or seeking sanctuary in Connecticut. Here, Franklin Ramos describes a previous instance of detainment based on his immigration status. After 24 years in the U.S., Franklin and Joe Conde Ramos must decide between returning to Ecuador or seeking sanctuary in Connecticut. Here, Franklin Ramos describes a previous instance of detainment based on his immigration status. Caption Betsy Guerra, executive director of COST, talks about her meeting with Daniel Malloy to discuss budget burdens for municipalities. Betsy Guerra, executive director of COST, talks about her meeting with Daniel Malloy to discuss budget burdens for municipalities. Caption Connecticut Attorney General George Jepson has filed or joined a growing number of lawsuits against the Trump administration Connecticut Attorney General George Jepson has filed or joined a growing number of lawsuits against the Trump administration Caption President Donald Trump is lashing out at Sen. Richard Blumenthal, calling him a phony Vietnam con artist shortly after the Democratic lawmaker said the investigation into Russian meddling in the election and possible collusion by the Trump campaign must be pursued. August 7, 2017, sign up for our free video newsletter here http colon slash slash bit.ly slash 2n6vkpr closing parenthesis President Donald Trump is lashing out at Sen. Richard Blumenthal, calling him a phony Vietnam con artist shortly after the Democratic lawmaker said the investigation into Russian meddling in the election and possible collusion by the Trump campaign must be pursued. August 7, 2017, sign up for our free video newsletter here http colon slash slash bit.ly slash 2n6vkpr closing parenthesis subscribe and listen to the Capital Watch podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, TuneIn.